Hello students. In this video we will continue with our p-value discussion by going through questions 3 and 4. Previously we went through questions 1 and 2. The data stays the same for question 3. And question 3 is a one-tailed test because of this keyword at least. And instead of having a population uh, standard deviation we have the sample standard deviation. Because we don't have the population standard deviation we have to use uh, the sample standard deviation and therefore we have to base our hypothesis test on t values. So the classical approach is using two t values. Uh, we're going to use the p-value approach by calculating a p-value for a test uh, statistic. Let's go to our whiteboard and here is the data. Um, they believe that the average income is greater than at least um, 80,000. Uh, the alternate hypothesis is that uh, the average is less than 80,000. The sample mean 78,750, sample size of 25, standard, standard deviation, and the level of alpha as given there. So we know from the previous video that our test statistic is negative 2.5. Um, just as a recap, this value is going to equal 78,750 minus 80,000 divided by the standard deviation over the square root of the sample size. And that gives us uh, this value in here, our test statistic. Now what we do with that test uh, statistic, it's a t-value, negative 2.5, we need to find the area and then make an adjustment to get that uh, p-value. So instead of going to the normal distribution chart, which is for z-values, we'd go to the t-distribution values chart, which looks like this. I believe I have it in Excel as well. So it looks like, um, looks like this. What we need to do is find the area or the probability associated with a t-value of 2.5. However, you'll soon realize that um, if you haven't already is a t-distribution chart versus the normal distribution chart is laid out quite differently. In the normal distribution chart all these interior values are probabilities. The outside are the z-values, the test uh, statistics if you if you like. Whereas in the t-distribution chart, the interior values are the test statistics, the one we're going to calculate. Whereas up here, these five values are the actual area or um, probabilities. So the t-distribution chart is set up a little differently. What we can do is we can take a look um, at a t-distribution value chart. So what we'll do is we'll copy this chart, which is, I've just uh, deleted some of the rows. We still have the rows that we need. We know that the sample size is 25, so the degrees of freedom is 24. So we need to be concerned about this row right in here. So let's go to our whiteboard. Um, let's create a new whiteboard. And... Sorry, where is that? Right in here. We're going to insert a picture that I've taken um, of our T distribution chart. So there's our T distribution chart. We know that we have um, 24 degrees of freedom. So degrees of freedom equals 24. Our test statistic equals 2.5 or actually negative 2.5 but we know that when we're trying to find the area for that value we ignore the negative sign. So we're going to first start at the 24 degrees of freedom row which is right in here and we're going to um, place this t value somewhere on that row um, to help you understand how the values are listed out, they go, they increase from left to right. 
So this value here, 1.318 versus 2.797 on the upper end. So where does 2.5 fit on this scale? You know that's going to fit somewhere between those two values, 2.492 and 2.797. Really close to that 2.492 value. So now we know that our p-value is between these values here because our t-value, our test statistic is right in there. So we move up to the top to the area in the upper tail and it's going to be between 0 0.005 and 0 0.01. Or, as a percent, it would be between 0, .0 oops, let's just erase that for a second, 0 0.5 and 1%. So 0.5% and 1%. Remember our p-value decision rule is to reject the null hypotheses. If the p-value, somewhere in there, is less than alpha. Alpha hasn't changed. Alpha is still 5%. So in this case, we are going to reject the null hypotheses. Once again, our p-value somewhere within that range is clearly less than 5%. So alpha could also be written as a percent. So let's look at the second example. Well, first before we move on, in Excel, we can actually find the test, or we can actually find the p-value. Um, the p-value is going to be is going to be exactly um, 0 0.098, but that's something you can only calculate by using Excel. So it's more than we need to do. So let's look at the second example. Let's just erase this for now. The second example, number four, the average income in Red Deer, everything is the same. Let's get rid of that, except for the income is reported to be equal to 80,000. And the sample average is given, the sample standard deviation is also given. So once again, this is going to be using T values. The difference here is it's, um, the average is assumed to be equal to 80,000. We're going to test the opposite. So this is an example of a two-tailed test. So let's write out the hypotheses. The null hypotheses, the average equals 80,000. Alternate hypotheses is that it does not equal 80,000. Same data. So we know that our test statistic, oops, sorry, not a T value or not a Z value. T value is equal to negative 2.5. Um, once again, the value didn't change, so uh, that test statistic is going to stay the same at uh, 2.5. So the process is the same. We need to find the area for that. So we go to our um, video or our spreadsheet here. We know that the 2.5 is going to be somewhere between those two values, 2.492 and 2.797. Let's just bring this up again. Oops, not there. Oops, I can't move that. So there is our T distribution values, we know that uh, T value of 2.5 is going to be somewhere between here, similar to the, the other example we worked on. So we know that the P value is going to be somewhere between there. P value is between 0 0.005 and 0 0.01. However, because this is a two-tailed test, and we know that the keywords, 
We know that it's a two-tailed test. The, the null hypothesis is that the average equals 80,000. Alternate hypothesis is that it does not equal 2,000 or 80,000. So the p-value here, similar to what we did in our first video, is we have to multiply this by 2. So the p-value is going to be between 0 0.01 and 0 0.02, or as a percent, 1% to two percent and most likely very close to that two percent value in using excel we can find the exact p-value the exact p-value is 1.96 percent so just shy of that two percent value our decision once again is to base it on our p-value which is right here and our level of alpha which is given at 5% or 0 0.05. It's clearly less than our threshold value of alpha. So we are going to make the same decision. Um, let's do this in bright yellow. Same decision to reject the null hypothesis. Rejecting the null hypothesis because the p-value is less than alpha.